I've been playing Quake for over 19 years. I've been pretty competitive in that time, always wanting to find a better mouse. And after two and a half years of running this channel, and about 100 mouse reviews, I've realized that no mouse is perfect, and I aim better with smaller mice. But there's one question I've been wondering about that I haven't been able to answer, and that is, can a mouse be too light? Introducing the Final Mouse Ultralight Pro, a large mouse that weighs only 71 grams with a bit of cable. Most mice this size are usually around 100 grams, even most small mice are above 85. No doubt that's why they're calling this the ultralight. When I first used it, I had to lower my sensitivity. I thought with my experience, I could adapt straight away, but I've never had a mouse feel like this before. I even thought I preferred the Scream 1 because it was heavier. Also, if you haven't noticed, this is the same shell design as the Scream 1. So it took me a few days, but I can now aim the mouse properly. And the verdict? I aim better with a lighter mouse. So the answer to the question of can a mouse be too light? Well, maybe but not yet. At the end, I'll talk about what I am best with. First, let's look at the design and how it performs. Looking at the top of the shell and the materials, we see the smooth plastic with a UV matte coating, which now has a honeycomb design, which is part of the reason it's so low weight. You can tell by the angles that they've kept strength, durability and weight in mind. And that honeycomb design is also in the base. But squeezing the sides in, you can see that it barely flexes. It's strong, doesn't make any sound. And the shape is actually one of the best out there. It's an ambidextrous design, but with buttons on the left only. There are some nice comfort grooves in the main buttons, and they should give you enough room to choose where you place your fingers. The hump on top is rounded, but fairly flat, giving your palm more area to rest on. For the sides, the back is flared out a little. And there's enough curvature going up and outward at the front for good grip when lifting it. From the side, it has a gradual slope from front to back, with the high point being in the middle. For measurements, the grip width is about 6cm, so that's where you'd usually put your fingers. The length is about 12.8, and the height is 4cm. Here's what it looks like next to some other mice, so you know the general size of it. It's actually bigger than it seems at first, very similar to the FK1+. Plus. So in palm grip, I think it'll suit hands between 17 and 19.5 centimeters. Claw, 17 to 21.5. And fingertip, 18 to 21.5. That's a basic size guide for comfort and aim. If you have a bigger or smaller hand, you might still like the mouse. It really depends on the person. Now here's a listen to the buttons to check the quality and feel. Left and right feel consistent with a nice snap to them, and I think there's enough tension on them to prevent accidental clicks for most people. And apparently they redesigned the plunger to hit the entire switch at once. As usual, mouse 3 has more tension, harder to press in, and it's very low. The wheel has steps that are noticeable, but they're surprisingly quiet and smooth. So in theory it should be good for browsing and gaming. Side buttons have low travel and a good click. Nothing amazing, but good enough. And the DPI button is flat and out of the way. In the latency testing, tested against the wired G403, there's really nothing in it, but by this testing, it looks like the ultralight is a tiny bit more responsive. This is a new test I'm using, filming at 1000 frames per second. Looking at the timeline, the first cut you see is when I click both mice, so I've done my best to synchronize them. The next cut you see is when the ultralight screen shows a flash, as if it's activated. The one shortly after is when the G403 showed activation, but the graphics weren't the same so I think that's something up with Quake. So the next cut we see is when the ammo count goes down. That's in the middle of the Quake screen. Goes from 999 to 998. The cut after is when the ultralight goes down. In the next, I synchronize them from the count going to 996. Unfortunately, I can't get high quality, but it seems like the G403 clicks here. And the ultralight, back here somewhere. Although looking at the light area just under the button, possibly here. So that seems to back up what was shown in the other testing. Both mice are very close. Although according to this, the G403 might be a tiny bit faster. I mean, these are so quick, there's no way you'd notice this in game. So definitely don't take this as a big deal. And in the final test, I checked the sensors and I've lined it up so that I tap both mice at the same time. 
and they both seem to show movement on the screen at the same time too, so no sensor delay on either. If anything was delayed, it was the monitor, which I had set at 60Hz. Both are extremely responsive mice. As for testing how it feels and performs, the sensor is a 3360 optical, which is pretty much the top sensor at the moment. It handles rocket jumping, no problem, and even moving it as fast as I can, it doesn't spin out. That means it doesn't lose track. Even when tilting the mouse on its side and then slamming it down quickly, it still keeps tracking. So that's really good. In the sniper test, it tracks pixel by pixel, and it does it smoothly. Moving it quickly from a point and then slowly back to the point, we can see that there's no acceleration or deceleration. The liftoff distance is just under a DVD on a cloth pad, and just over a DVD on a hard pad, which is extremely low. It should keep your aim steady even if you lift the mouse a lot. To test ghosting on the buttons, I have mouse 2 as forward, mouse 1 as fire, and the side buttons are set to jump and move left. So using them all at once, you can see that I can still jump while strafing left and moving forward while firing. So all good there, no ghosting. Another issue can be buttons activating after slamming the mouse down. As you can see, no such problem on this mouse. In the line test, compared with the G403, I see no abnormal jitter or skipping, no angle snapping, the liftoff movement is good, and there's no lens rattle. So it's a great performance by the 3360 as always. For the build when tapping it, it sounds fairly solid, and when shaking it, there's a very minor rattle, but nothing of concern. The cable is about 1.9 meters, or about 6 feet and 3 inches long. It's braided, but not as smooth or as flexible as it could be. This is an early model, and I've heard they're working on that. But you see in this test, I can push it back from pretty far away. So hopefully they can figure something out. Thankfully, in a mouse bungee, I had no issues. There are four mouse feet, and they glide smoothly. And the balance was fine-tuned to be in line with the sensor, which is in the center. Okay, now for the aiming. I tested this against all other top mice around this size. I played for hours just changing between the Rival 600, the G403, the EC1B, and the FK1+. Those are all amazing mice that I love, and while aim is subjective, I did notice I was aiming better with the ultralight than the FK1+. Plus. I also aimed better with it than the EC1B. However, I couldn't really tell the difference between the Rival 600 and G403. These are highlights with each, but I could show you entire games and it still wouldn't tell the story. There are too many variables in Quake. And that leads me to the conclusion. Like the screen one before it, this is a top mouse. Amazing shape, top sensor, great buttons, and extremely low weight for its size. If you're after a competitive large mouse, then this is definitely worth a look especially if you like the low weight. But where does it place in the top 40? Well, it beat the Zoe FK1+, Plus, so it's above that. Although if you want a smaller mouse like I do, I would still recommend the FK2 or FK1. But can it beat the G403 and Rival 600, which are the top two at the time of making this video? Yes and no. As always, I recommend you don't worry about the numbers so much. Just find the right mouse for you. Any of these three could be your number one. For the more competitive players out there with large hands, I would recommend the G403 and Ultralight. Although if it was casual players choosing between the two, I'd recommend the G403, and that's why the Ultralight Pro goes to number 3. But again, if you have a hand about my size, and you want to aim your best, right now I'd still recommend the Zowie FK2, and that's why that's my number 1. I hope that's clear enough. You have to find the right mouse for you, and if your hand size suits the Ultralight, or you want to try the low weight, then this is a great choice. Now, I have affiliate links for all mice, so I'm not biased with what you buy. I want you to get what's right for you. But if you buy using my links, I do appreciate the support as always. And good news, if you buy from Final Mouse, be sure to use my link and use the code RJN, which will give you an extra discount. I'll leave that in the description and comments though, with the other links to help support the channel. So I hope that helps. Special thanks to Final Mouse for sending it out for review. Subscribe for more gaming mouse and tech videos. Like and share this one, and I'll catch you in the next.